Lamborghini and I work hard. So if y'all work hard, y'all can accomplish your dreams just like I Are you confused or even angry on why little Tay blew up? That's why on today's episode, we're going to go over how the youngest flexor of the century got 1.6 million followers and how you can too. This is how they blew up with Chick-fil-A. Oh, hey there. Hey guys, my name is Jade and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video and uh, today we're talking about Little Tay. Oh my gosh. You know, when you get onto the, the weird side of YouTube, there's also the weird side of Instagram. You know, when you just when you scroll too much. Have you ever been on your Explore page way too long and suddenly you, you go through the Instagram comedians and then you go through people like Little Tay? Um, Little Tay is an entertainer, rapper, so, entrepreneur. We don't actually know right now yet. Uh, she has 17 posts, but over 1.8. 1.6 million followers. I believe she does produce music, but her main selling point is the millions of views on each and every video on Instagram. 100,000 comments on her posts. Uh, people that do really amazing things in this world don't get 100,000 comments. Like, Bill Tay must be doing something right. So we're gonna crack down the code, and I feel like you guys wanna know how she did it, but in a marketing sense, right? Like a lot of, we're gonna strap up. So today's video is actually gonna be really interesting. We're gonna talk about little Tay, but throughout the day, as I get some stuff, you're coming with me. So the way these videos work is I talk in this car and I grab food. So today's food and mission is we're going to Chick-fil-A. Thank you, Danielle. And we're gonna get some food, just talk. Like, I feel like you guys were highly requesting Little Tay. Like, please talk about how Little Tay blew up. If you guys don't know, my name is Jay. Nice to meet you. I'm an entrepreneur. I've been helping people grow on social media, and my number one favorite series so far has been how this person blew up. We've done Alexis Ren, and I really just wanna give you guys less of like how she grew up and how she got famous, more like the marketing side behind it, so you guys get value. Like, my number one reason for creating this channel is just to make sure you grow your personal brand too, and I really do care about you guys. So this video is, is not supposed to like discourage you It's only supposed to just kind of tell you how the market reacts to viral videos and how to apply it to your own brand too So without further ado, um, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe if you're ready to dive in So we need to start how, what Little Tay does You know, I think I always believe and teach you guys content distribution you Gotta start with good content Well, Little Tay, um Little Tay has copped a brand new Ferrari Sending all y'all broke ass haters So she started with being broke for six years of her life. She's a nine years old now, and she picked up her blocks and started breaking stuff, and then she became rich. And I'm only nine years old. Um, that's the narrative. But her real mom is actually a real estate broker in Vancouver, Canada. This is hard, honestly. Little Tay actually had multiple Instagram accounts. One of them actually got flagged and removed, so that's why she has a new one. What I'm trying to say is a lot of stuff was deleted, so this video is like actually extremely hard to crack down. Like, I don't know if I can do this, guys. Let's see if I can make it. Honestly, I wrote down a lot of things uh, marketing strategy-wise, but like, oof, this video was hard. Like, I'm telling you, like, I did Emma Chamberlain. Like, that was hard, but Little Tay is literally hard. You kind of need talent. You kind of need a little bit of talent. I guess not. We're gonna start with the first reason why. I lived in Atlanta and I was broke as hell. But the first reason why Little Tay blew up was through a bomb ass collab. So you guys need a little bit of context for this to make sense. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of backstory. I know this is maybe a little long and chit chatty, but you will only understand it if you listen to this part. There's a girl named Daniel Brigoli. Um, similar style content, flexing, all that rapper lifestyle, right? We're all musicians at heart, apparently. Brigoli caught attention through Dr. Phil's show. So she was interviewed there for actually being a horrible misbehaved child. <laughs> Talent, who needs talent when he can be just horrible? That happened, so Dr. Phil already has a huge rep. Like, he has huge distribution because of this televised TV show. So Daniel Brigoli picked up popularity and exposure through Dr. Phil's show. However, she took it to her own and transferred that traffic to her own social media account by kind of being the same wild personality. Because when you think about it, if you're crazy on Dr. Phil's show and you wanna know more, you kinda wanna follow this girl somewhere else. Little Tay does this in a different way, but I wanna let you know, when Daniel Brigo, <laughs> what am I even talking I'm talking about 14 year olds making millions. So back to the thing, Daniel Brigoli picked up popularity, which means Little Tay backpacked off of it because she saw the success of Danielle just replicate it in her own way. There's a book called Steal Like an Artist, I highly recommend, I always reference this book. But one of the, one of the main points basically of this 
this book is just teaching people how to steal like an artist, which is not to copy. Um, copying is horrible, but if you can actually take imitation and make it in your own words, that's good for your brand. What I'm trying to say is Little Tay saw the potential of being really whack ass on social and just made it her own. So she became the youngest luxer of the century. So if you guys can see a pattern, like you guys see that? Dr. Phil definitely think lords, you guys made them careers. Now they don't have to go to four year university and get college debt. Little Tay blew up really fast. Like I feel like we haven't mentioned that before. Like Little Tay literally just, she, her last, her first post on her new account was February. And she's at 1.6 million followers. Like come on. What? Oh shit, the sun. Oh my god. We're gonna go to the second reason, but like it's kind of bright and I need to go to Chick Flavors. I have glasses on my head. Oh my god. Um, do I, I look like a meme. I legitimately look like a meme. These glasses are $2 from Wish, but if you put it like this, it looks fashionable. Fashion, meme. Fashion, meme. Ah! Oh guys, it's so it's been a while. It hasn't been like this in a while. Like I was just traveling in LA. Uh, I was speaking and I had a meeting. You know, I was building up my business. I just want to let you know, I, ha I never forgot about you guys. You know, you guys are amazing. Second reason why I little blow, blow up was because she was always in the scene. She knew how to really get the attention of the audience. Actually, oh my God. She, apparently she's managed by Miranda Cosgrove, the girl from iCarly. Oh. But let's just say her management team knows how to make sure L little Tay is in the scene. For example, when Whoa Vicky, which is another, I don't know how to describe these people, rapper, they got off in a fight with Daniel Bregoli. Stop. 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 And Little Tate took initiative and made that her profile picture. You know, it gave Daniel's followers kind of curiosity to look at Little Tay's account. And when you look at their most like similar-ish personalities, it really gives, it drives traffic to each other, which means they're most likely to follow, which brings her to getting so many millions of followers just because she knows how to leech and segment an audience. This is genius. Like, I'm not gonna lie, like setting your profile picture as someone else that you want to have the followers of is smart. It's not gonna lie. Attention is attention. <gasps> We're at Chick-fil-A, guys. Okay, so I'm gonna order and then we're going to the third reason. Can I please get the uh, small waffle fry and just chicken nuggets? I actually have a gift card. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh my God. Oh no, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, this is embarrassing. What am I? <laughs> I can't drive. This is just an episode of Jade Can't Drive. <laughs> Okay, okay, so guys, we have only a few more points, don't you worry. We're gonna crack on the case of how she blew up. Well, what I want to know if is Little Tay makes music. So let's have a good day. Little Tay, hey. Go, Kate. I be shooting off rockets, homie, who say? Little Tay, money red. What? I'm gonna be shooting off like an essay. Yeah. What I think as a huge effect is the rice gum coincidence. The rice gum coincidence was basically them roasting each other. It was kind of like a collaboration. A lot of you guys asked me, hey Jay, how do I collab with other YouTubers or Instagrammers? You have to bring content that's valuable to the audience. So in this case, they, just, they didn't necessarily have to do like a sit down, hey, what's up you guys? Starting drama is value. It's entertainment and it's funny for us to watch. Little kids, they enjoy watching other little kids their age get made fun of. That's why Rice Gum's content is so popular for younger people, which I've mentioned before, which brings popularity because now Rice Gum transferred his audience kind of to Little Tay. I think the thing with Little Tay and when I discussed how she grew, a lot of you guys are going to get upset or have been upset that Little Tay, a nine-year-old flexor, just blew up for no reason. Now, I have to say, whenever I think people... Okay, sorry. A lot of people are accusing or get upset of people who blew up for not having any talent, etc. Jake Paul, all those guys. And you have to understand, like talent does get you somewhere, but talent doesn't do no shit if you just sit there and don't get the awareness for it. A lot of you guys are talented people naturally. I have a lot of artist friends that are so talented, but they can't market for shit. I feel like what I'm trying to say for you guys, yes, you are talented, but you can't just focus on your craft all the time. I'm not saying you gotta go to Little Tay level. Please don't come at me like that. It's all about content and distribution. How much content are you making around your music, whatever you're working on, you know, as an influencer, maybe you're doing that as well, but not at the scale and not at the extremity of maybe some other people. Little Tay does really well, it's just supply and demand. There's not a lot of people that can do what she's doing. So how do how does a rapper stand out nowadays? <laughs> it's the lifestyle, they had to portray a character that's really out there. The, the last thing I wanna say is how she, she just makes viral content. Viral, I just actually looked it up. Being viral is actually creating reaction. A lot of you guys don't know how to create reaction. Stand out. And it's the same way, let, let me give you an analogy. Like, 
like I wanted you guys to take me as example. I've been through a lot. I failed a lot through my social media training trying to also blow up because we all want to have little taste followers. I remember like last year I got so upset over successful people. I knew it was jealousy. You know what I mean? Like have you ever been that way where you know you were good at something but someone else sucked at it but got more attention for it and you were kind of upset because you actually work hard. What I've learned is after posting all my YouTube videos, I used to do vlogs, I used to do like makeup tutorials. It wasn't, it's not that you're not good enough. It's just you also need to spend a majority of your time getting it to the public thinking about what the consumer is gonna feel and I feel like we should stop getting angry over people who are successful let them be it might not be for the great reason but that shouldn't let us that shouldn't stop us from doing what we're doing and I really do support you if you're a artist I think the biggest attribute you do have is to make viral content you can't just post a song anymore you have to put content around it kind of like you can't just be talented at rapping you got to have money you know just sell the lifestyle people want to follow people that have the lifestyle they want and I'm assuming little Tay is our Dream. No, it's not. Like, let me know if you like like to see a video about how to like make viral content. I think virality is really interesting. It's hard. It not everyone can do it, but I don't know if you guys want to see a video how to make viral content like Little Tay and Bad Baby and all those guys. Comment below. Let me know what you guys want to see. The point of this video is I think we should just fucking stop. Just stop. Stop complaining about Little Tay, Little Schnee. Hey there. Stop and just. Be yourself and think about ways you can get it to the public. Little Tay, it might have been leeching off someone else's followers. You know what? That works for her. For you, it might be you need to post Instagram ads. You might need to do another influencer marketing technique and collaborate with people that are with your style. Go out there. No one's all, no one else is gonna stop you except you. So with that being said, um, crush it. I love you all so so much. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, and check out the end cards if you're new to this channel. You want to see a couple other of my videos. Love you all. So much! Freaking love you! I'm working on so many things right now for you guys, different products and app, uh, you know. Shout out to the caught winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you want to be the next comment winner, comment below. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Peace. Oh my god, that was so stupid. <laughs>